Okay, Shala Wong. I like to give all praises due to Abinawa Yahweh, Bashem Yahweh Shah. In respect to all you brothers out there sincerely pushing this word on the front line in the battlefield, making your calling and your elect sure. Another episode of Performing Arts. Okay, what I want to get into is about using the scriptures when it benefits you, okay? I think that's gonna be the title. I'll switch it up when it's time. Um, if I think to adjust it, to switch up the title. But um, yeah, because you got a lot of, the reason why I thought about this, you got a lot of brothers that are leaders that's been in this truth for years. And, or maybe got a rank Okay, and they misuse their rank, and they misuse their rank, and they misuse, they treat the brotherhood wrong. They didn't have no respect, and this is not their thing. It's the most highest thing under Yahweh Shah. He's our chief cornerstone. He's our master builder, okay, and a lot of these brothers that study for, you know, years or have a certain, you know, rank, they filthy, okay? They filthy. They misuse these, these scriptures when it benefits them, okay? Or they use these scriptures to manipulate the mind of the ones that don't know or new coming up um, brothers, brothers that just came in, okay, that don't know. Okay, and then they get offended if brothers ask questions, you know, like why? Okay, if they don't know, because remember our souls, the the um the people's souls are in um the leader's hand. They have a big penalty to pay for that when they mislead the people, okay, or manipulate the scriptures to gain for their own personal gain. Let's start with Leviticus twenty five seventeen. And that's how you know that a lot of brothers don't be real. They don't be sincere in this. Okay? It says, Leviticus 25, 17. You shall not therefore oppress one another, but thou shalt fear the Most High, for I am the Lord, your power. You shall not therefore oppress one another. Yeah, because think about it. We're already getting beat up. In the world, we're already being oppressed by Esau. We're already getting oppressed by the um, the other heathen nations, okay? And there's other personal things that we're going on in our own life, okay? That's the goal being tried in the fire, okay? So we're trying to, we all trying to do the best that we can do, okay? And then you have men that's brokenhearted and they look for other men to lead them. Not to worship, but to lead them. Because they figure that these men are in the in the scriptures. Now, even the devil know how to. He know the scriptures, okay. And men are not perfect. That's why we tell you to look into things for yourself. If you learn, you study for a little while, and then you start. The Most High start giving you the increase and in opening your mind for you to be able to see things for yourself. So now, when you get to that certain level or whatever like that, you could look up things for yourself and get understanding for things yourself. So here you got the nations oppressing us, and then you got our own leaders oppressing us, doing us wrong, okay? Taking money from brothers, okay? They living good, the brothers damn near homeless, okay? All types of stuff. Now let's go to the next scripture. It's 1 Thessalonians 4 and 6. And you know, people don't usually feel bad until they get caught. And they never probably really feel bad or or dis, or, or get kicked out of, of, of this group, out of the church, the body of Yahawashai, okay, until they get caught. But if they never got caught, would their conscience let them come to repentance and they knew the things that what they were doing was wrong, okay? So let's go to First Thessalonians 4 and 6. That no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any matter. Read it again. 
that no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any manner, because that the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we also have forewarned you and testified. See, the prideful men are so prideful that they don't even see the atrocities that they're committing against other brothers, and they don't care because the pride blinded them, blinded their conscience, so that they can't see, okay? And then it be revealed, and maybe the Lord, well, the Lord reveals them, and they get kicked out. But here's my thing. Are they sorry because they got, because they're really sorry, or are they sorry because they got busted? You know what I'm saying? They got busted. And these are men that's supposed to look after our souls, okay? That's why even up-and-coming up, up brothers, okay, you talking on a highway and byway, and you bring another soul in, you're responsible for that soul when you teach them. Because these ain't your words. These are, the, these are holy words, man. This is the most high words. And, you, if, and if you know something is wrong, with a breakdown, it just don't sit right, and you allowed to sit with it because other men tell you to preach that or to teach that, and you know that, hey, that's wrong, but you decide to go with it because the mass and the majority rules, you're being a follower, and you're not being a teacher, and you're not, being a, uh, uh, you're not a follower of Mahasha, of the Messiah. You're doing your own damn thing. Read that again, that no man beyond... And defraud his brother in any manner. That means in anything. And when you teaching brothers other things that fill your belly or that pleases you, or what you was once taught, and now you find a, you find that what you was once taught was wrong, and you just go along with the other people because you don't want nobody being mad at you, or you don't want nobody you don't want to feel like you are people kicking you out and you're on your own. That is not a man. And that is not a follower of Yahawashah. Let's go to Matthew 7, 15. Matthew 7, 15. And this is from Yahawashah's mouth himself. Beware of false prophets. Because you are a false prophet if you stand in a community of brothers that's teaching stupid, wicked doctrine or man-made doctrine, okay? You know other brothers is ripping other brothers off, okay? And your leader is probably, um, let's say, for shits and giggles, that your leader is like 300, 300 a pound and built with um, muscles, okay? And he, and he real like rugged or whatever like that. And you know he's just ripping off brothers. And you scared to say anything. And everybody looking at everybody else in the crowd to see, is he going to say something first? Oh, I ain't going to say nothing. Let's see if he's going to say something. But nobody's standing for the truth that the things they're in. Now, I, I, I say that there's a time for everything, but when are you going to address that situation? When are you going to address that situation? Or how long are you going to keep having a man talk to you and degrade you? The next thing, he'll be degrading you in, your, in front of your family. If you marry, in front of your wife, in front of your kids, I guess you will allow that. Now, <clears throat> I had an old teacher, okay, his name was Atazaban, Sojourner. And at one time, he told us that in one West, the school that he told us that it was guys that were coming in with their wife, right? And being that they had rank and they'd been in here a while, these guys was fucking up, excuse my language, they was fucking the guy's wives while the guy sit there and say, yo, or taking their wives and saying, I don't know how true this was, but he said they were taking other men's wives. Okay, they was misusing the scriptures. And then women that didn't know, they were going sleeping with these guys too. So are you condoning that and you never say anything about that? This is the story he told me. I wasn't there, so I don't know. I'm just passing it, you know, using this as a scenario to wake other brothers up, man. This, to be a man, and to be a man, a good man, according to the scriptures, there's certain things that you have to see. First, you may, you may wait, 
and maybe and, and see maybe the Lord is going to reveal that. But there's a, th there's a time that you got to stand up. If you see brothers being distorted and you being brothers took advantage of, you see God saying, telling you what to do in your own household with your wife or what with, with your family. Okay, because remember, your wife is your property. It's not another man's property. I don't care if he's a bishop or whatever he is. Your wife and your thing is your personal thing. I don't give a damn if he's your bishop or if he's your leader. That's in the scriptures. The Lord gave you that. So now if you don't know and you coming in, you're going to let this man come in your house, run your house, tell you to stay extra hours at the work while he's spending time with your wife. <laughs> you see how wicked that is? So those are just prime examples where he told me that what happened thing would happen in one West. So you got a lot of teachers. I'm not saying all of them, you know, you know, I'm saying not that all of them, not saying all of them, because you have some teachers that I think that are good, you know, teachers or whatever like that. It's just that I don't agree with maybe a couple of breakdowns that they have, but all in all, in all I think they're really good teachers. Okay. But I just don't agree with certain breakdowns. And I don't care how you put a spin on it, okay, or how you try to tell me, brother, I just can't see because I don't have the spirit on me. That's what they usually that's what they usually use as well. Brother, you don't have the spirit on you. That's why you don't see it. That's another art of manipulation. Okay? So that's that. Now we're gonna go to Romans 16 and 8. And I say this to use this this video. This video is to edify you to let you know to think, man. You know, think. Okay? Romans 16 and 18. Think for yourself. Because remember, Yahabashah is not picking up a dude. The chariot is not coming to pick you up if you got a, a, a if you got fear in your heart. Okay? And anything goes by you. Romans 16 and 8. 16, 18. I'm sorry. Romans 16 and 18. And that's in the scriptures, first and foremost. And that's in actual life. Romans 16, 18. For they that are such serve not our Lord, Mashiach Yehoshah, but their own belly. And by good words and fair speeches, deceive the hearts of the simple. So that's an example that I was telling you about what happened with one West that the brother was telling me. Niggas was brothers would sit there and they would have rank. And because they have rank, they would misuse it to do disgusting, filthy acts. And now here's the food for thought. A lot of brothers that was in one West, did they turn their head to a blind eye and ignored it because they was under? Now, a lot of them would say, no, I said something. No, you didn't. Majority, you didn't. A majority, you let these things take place. Okay? Because you was in a high rank at that time. You, was, you just didn't come into school one West and was number one rank, high rank. Okay? You, was, you had to start from the bottom. So maybe certain things you couldn't say. But when you came up to there and you knew better and you and your mind was open up, did you say something? Or you wanted to stay friends with the people? You wanted to stay friends with the other guys that you know? That's being a man of the Lord, y'all. That's being a man of the Lord and that's having your foot rooted to be able to discern, have a righteous judgment. Okay? Even if 20 people are against you, even if you had a friend that you, a familiar friend that you was close that was going off because he joined the, he joined the majority of the people. Are you going to stand tall or are you going to fall? Are you going to stand tall or are you going to fall? Second Peter's two and one. Let's go to Second Peter's two and one. Second Peter's chapter two verse one. But there were false prophets also among the people, just like today, okay? Even as there shall be false teachers among you, even as today, who privately shall bring a damnable hearsay. Let's look up what a hearsay is. I believe that's philosophy. 
but just for you to know, to those who don't know. Strong's G139, Hyresis. Hyresis. An act of taking capture, storming a city, choosing a choice that was just chosen, a body of men following their own tenets, sect, or party. See, read it again. A body of men following their own tenets, sect, or party. Look to see what's tenets. Okay, check this out. Tenant, any opinion or principle or doctrine or dogma, especially one held as true by members of profession, group, or movement, belief, or position. The word tenant defined here should not be hard to pronounce for speakers of American English, seeing the number 10, then add the pronoun, pronoun it, and then you have tenant, pronounce Unfortunately, there is a similar look and a similar sounding word in English that is much more common, the word tenant, meaning someone who rents. But this is tenant. Okay? So you see that? And it says, a body of men following their own tenants, sect or party. Or the last one, dissensions arising from diversity of opinions and, uh, and aims. So, if somebody tells you, if you see for yourself, you read in this chapter where heresies is, right? And somebody else come and tell you it's something else. And you looked it up. And then 20 of the people that you with, let's say it's 40 in a crowd. And let's say 38 of the people saying that this is what it is. It's not what you got from the definition. You niggas is going to follow that. And you're going to agree to that. Okay? And you're going to jump on the bandwagon with that. First of all, a man like that, you don't want around you, man. Anybody that's easy to be, just jump to anything, jump to it and just say, okay, that's it because majority of the people doing it, that's a man you don't want to be around. You don't even want to keep company with someone like that. They'll put you in danger. They'll tell you something and then you go look into it and damn near get your ass killed. They'll tell you the easier way... To go down to Manhattan Bridge, they tell you to go through a one street and the street is, is shaking and, and the car dishes in the ditch because of the weight of the, or whatever. Something in, um, similar to that. They'll lead you away, man. Lead you to, to the wrong path. You don't want to do that. Read it again. But this is Second Peter 2, chapter 2, verse 2 and 1. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privately shall bring a damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift judgment. And listen to this, verse 2. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of the truth shall be evil spoken of. Let's look at pernicious. Pernicious ways. Strong's G six eighty four, Apolia, Apolia, Apolia. Destroying, utter destruction. Okay, a vessel perishing, ruined destruction. A of money, the destruction which consists of eternal misery in hell. Waste, damnable, to die, perish, pernicious. So it's a waste, okay? So that's all, you know? So you don't get into stuff like that. You look it up. You don't follow um, the mass of the people, okay? You don't follow the mass of the people. You follow... The scriptures. You follow the pure doctrine. Okay? And remember, if you didn't understand something, that's different if you don't understand it. Okay? Then you just be like, okay, but you don't try to just make it sound good 
if you don't have no understanding of it. You know, trying to patch it all up. You know, you can't do that. You know? Now let's go to Luke 16, 15. Luke 16, 15. Luke 16, 15. And he said unto them, you are they who justify yourselves before men. And that's what a lot of guys want to do. When they come out, or even guys that's been in here a while, they get that prideful spirit, okay? They'll say, well, if you don't believe this, and it's not in the scriptures, so if it's not in the scripture, don't make me quote it to your way, okay? If, if it says that, if it says, um, if it says in Luke 16, 15, right? And it reads just the way this says, and he said unto them, you are they who justify yourself before men, and they tell you to read it another way. Okay, no, read it, and that's the way it's supposed to be read. The way it's and this is in Yahweh's writings. This is in his voice. This is him that wrote this. This is his words. So they tell you use something else. Nah, man. And remember, four, it's 50 people in a crowd all together, and only two don't agree, but the rest of the majority of the people believe in that damnable heresy. You gonna follow it too, cause you're gonna feel like you like you being an oddball, or you don't want people to be mad at you. Come on, man. I've seen personally that brothers connected with other brothers that made fun of them, and then brothers admitted that a brother didn't preach or say a, a certain quotation or preach a certain um scripture or a certain breakdown. And and I, and I had said, I said, well, are you mad because he didn't push the doctrine that you wanted him to push? But that's what the whole argument was about. And they was going to diss this guy. Do you know to this day, this boy, this young man went right back to them? Okay. After that, do you know that? Okay. Now let's go to Romans chapter 2. And that's our final scripture. Romans chapter 2, verse 21. Thou therefore which teach another, teach thou not thyself. So you sitting here telling other brothers on the streets, don't teach, um, don't smoke cigarettes. But secretly you smoke cigarettes. You secretly teach telling brothers through the law and through the through the laws and the testimony. Okay, that don't um, defile yourself with overeating or don't defile yourself with abomination. Okay, or don't be gay. Okay, and you secretly being gay. Okay, or you secretly being on a down low. Okay, or don't steal, but you stealing. Come on, man. So that's why I say a lot of these brothers, a lot of these camps use things to their own benefit when it, to benefit them. Oh, brother, you know what I'm saying? You got to get a job because they need you to pay them um, arms, okay? So you could pay them arms and you damn near homeless. You damn near can't even take the subway to your job. You damn near could buy a burger or a sandwich to eat. So they'll tell you to get the job. Oh, brother, you got to get the job. So what if you don't get a job in a year? Even though you should get a job. Okay, because the Lord tells you that. But you should be making sure you took care of, and they should be making sure that the flock is taken care of, and not just themselves. And that's what we're talking about, feeding their own belly. Do an example of different leaders of Israel. Okay? Are they living, are, are, it's okay for them to live good, because they doing, if they're doing the Lord's word, they could do that. They could live decently. But when you're robbing other people and the other people are starving or not living that good or don't have those things and you got $1,000 juice blenders, okay? And a nigga barely could come up with rent money for a room. That's not right, man. Something is not right with that. And then another thing, what those leaders do, they'll tell you 
about what you shouldn't do, but they won't show you how to do it. Okay? They'll tell you to get a job, or y'all. some of y'all got to get a trade, but they won't show you how to do it or how to go about it. You know? Because sometimes young brothers just don't know the way. You know, they don't know how to get there. They got ideas. They want to do it, but they might not, you know, know the, know the way. And some of them, what, what if they don't know how to read good or read that well? Some people need help. So we're not just supposed to, first and foremost, we're supposed to lead the people for opening their mind with the scriptures first. But the scriptures also teaches you power economics and how to uplift other brothers as well through trade and through skill. So they don't have to live with the bare minimum. They can have a little bit in the life. Not to be super rich like the, the, the elite, but to live comfortable. And you don't show them that. You just tell them to get 45 jobs. You don't even ask them what's going on in their life, what they're going into. Okay? As long as you're good. Okay? Some brothers, I done been with some brothers, and they don't even know where the brothers live at. <laughs> Come on, man. They don't even know how to get in touch with the brother. Anyway. It says, Romans 2, 21. Thou therefore, which teach another, teach thou not thyself. Thou that preach a man should not steal. Does thou steal? Exactly what I said. You telling these people what to do, but you are you doing it? Okay. Thou that says a man should not commit adultery. Does thou commit adultery? Does thou that, that abhor idols? Does thou commit sacrilege? What does sacrilege mean? Strong's G twenty four sixteen. He Rasuleo. He Rasuleo. To commit sacrilege, to rob a temple. In Romans two twenty two, where is the meaning is thou who abhor, who abhors abhors idols and their contamination does yet not hesitate to plunder their shrines. Get rid of it. Okay. Um to be a temple robber figuratively, okay? Now, let's go to that in here. Sacrilege, for, for commit sacrilege in Romans 2.22, in English, the, it says, has robbed temples, which more exactly which more exactly expresses the meaning of a verb. Temple robbers, of which the noun occurs in 2 Maccabee, the King's James Version. So let's go to 2 Maccabees 439. 2 Maccabees 439. Hold on, bear with me. Second Maccabees four thirty-nine. And it says Now when many sacrileges sacrileges had been committed in the city by Lysacamus with the consent of Manilius and the brute, therefore, was spread abroad. The multitude gathered themselves together against Lysicamus, many vessels of gold being already carried away, whereupon the common people rising and being filled with rage, Lysicamus armed about 3,000 men and began first to offer violence, one Arnorinus being the leader, a man far gone in years and no less in folly. They then seemed to attempt a lasacomus. Some of them caught st stones, some clubs, others taking handfuls of dust that was next at the hand and cast them all together upon lasacomicus and those that set upon them. Thus many of them they, they wounded and some they struck to the ground and all them that were forced to flee. But as for the church robber, Himself, him they kill beside the treasury. <laughs> All 
All right, so we find a little bit about that. Let's look at this one. For you have brought hither these men, which are neither robbers of the church, nor yet blasphemer of godness, of goddess. Well, I don't know what that one is. But we see what that is, sacrilege, okay? So we got that. Thou that makes the boast of the Lord, thou breaking the Lord, dishonors the, the, the most high. Read that again. Thou that makes thy boast of the Lord, thou breaking through breaking the law, dishonors the, the Father. For the name of the Most High is blasphemed among the Gentiles through you as it was written. Oh, listen to this, my favorite. For circumcision really profit if thou keep the law. But if thou be a breaker of the law, the circumcision is made uncircumcision. What does that mean? Okay, because we're talking circumcision of the heart. Okay, we're talking circumcision of, of the heart. Therefore, if the uncircumcision keep the righteousness of the Lord, shall not his uncircumcision be counted for circumcision? All right, so that's all. A lot of brothers use scriptures and, and, and try to manipulate you. And I gave you scenarios about the thing in one West. I'm sure other teachers that have been in one West... They'll tell you the things that happened, how they robbed guys and how they was taking extra money for them, having them on the tables, oil tables, all types of stuff, man. They would tell you all these stories, okay? So we had wicked just guys that even they have the Bible in their hand, man, they still be wicked guys. And wicked wickedness also, too, is someone that doesn't stand up for the truth. So that means that they would go with any doctrine, any doctrine. And they'll nod their head to the beat like a sucker. Nod their head to the beat. Yo, that's dope. Knowing that song ain't dope, man. You'll turn around and look on the right, and it would be a nigga nodding his head to a beat. And he'd be like, yo, don't. The beat is going boom. And he know that that beat ain't really thumping. But everybody else nodding their head to the beat. And you watch the sucker. He know that the beat is corny. And he nodding his head to the beat. Trying to be cool. That's a sucker next to you, man. Get him away from you. Okay? Shalom.